Hello and thank you for dropping by the channel where we provide you with tips and tools to help you move with purpose. In today's video we're going to go through hip airplanes, I'm going to tell you why I like this exercise and some of the key things to look for when performing this movement. If you find this video helpful, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. Thank you so much. There's a lot of discussion surrounding lateral hip support and a lot of exercises to help improve that. One of the common things that we see with a lack of lateral hip support under load is that hip gliding out to the side in an uncontrolled manner. And that has implications on the knee joint and lower back as well as within the hip joint itself. So commonly prescribed exercises to help that really focus in on the gluteus medius muscle and the gluteus minimus muscles in particular. Some of those exercises include things like side lying leg raises or clamshells. And those are fantastic exercises to get you to activate those muscles and find those muscles and get some stimulation in them. However, they don't really address the actions of those muscles under functional loading, such as walking. Another component that's missed with the lack of lateral hip support is the hip isn't just gliding out to the side. So it's not exclusively a weakness in those muscles, but there's also a rotary component that's occurring. So when you're loading into that hip and that hip glides out to the side, you'll notice that the hip doesn't just move laterally. There's also internal rotation that's usually occurring with that movement. So there's also a lack of stability with the deep external hip rotators. This is where hip airplanes come in. So they're a great exercise to add in conjunction with these other movements when you're ready for them. I like this movement because it can be scaled to any level. You can perform them with the back leg supporting. You can perform these having support from both the back leg and the arm, or you can do these completely balancing on one leg. You can also add extra load to either the supported variations or the balanced one. So the setup for performing this movement is you're going to place your load on the front leg. We're going to have a slight bend in that knee. We want to clamp that foot into the ground ensuring good foot contact. We want to make sure that the weight of your body feels like it's centered over top of the arch of your foot. Now from here, we want to have good alignment where that knee points roughly in the direction of your second or middle toe. Once we have the alignment and weight centered, we're going to glide our hips back into a little bit of a hip hinge. This hip hinge position is going to add a little bit more stress to the glute complex as a whole and make it easier to access those external glute rotator muscles. So in this position, I want to be nice and tall from the crown of my head down to my tailbone, core engaged, thinking of keeping a nice neutral spine. I want to pretend that I'm on a swivel between these two points. The movement has to come exclusively out of the hip joint. So since we have this alignment set up, we're going to slowly glide this hip down towards the ground, I'm going to drive through the ground and articulate out of that hip joint thinking of being on a swivel with my body. So you can see that rotation is coming out of the hip joint itself and everything else moves as one complete unit. So where I see most people mess this up is the hip joint doesn't actually move and they're rotating with their torso or they're just counterbalancing with their weight and they're not actually using those muscles to create that articulation or rotation out of the joint. So you have to think about engaging and using those hip muscles with this exercise. And once again, you can perform this exercise supported and loaded. The same principles apply. With a loaded variation, you're going to hold a weight in the opposite hand to the foot or leg that you're standing on. Once you're in your start position, you're again rotating from that hip joint, letting that weight drop towards the ground. Then you're engaging those glute muscles and rotating everything up from that hip joint and slowly back down. And that is the hip air.
airplane exercise. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you found this helpful.